Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. Today, let's talk about this amp. It's very orange. Very uniquely orange in more ways than one. Let's take a closer look. So, pretty funny how I got this amp. The Orange Rocker Verb is one of those incredibly well-renowned flagship big boy tube amps. A lot of people even regard it as the pinnacle of high gain tube amps. And I've been working with Orange, collaborating with them on content for a few years. We even set a couple of their small amps on fire together in Germany. We wanted to blow them up first, but Tillman said we couldn't do that, so we settled on fire. Compromise. Point is, we've got some history. And they were astounded and low-key a little <laughs> disappointed that even after all this time, I've never even plugged in once to their flagship. So big tube amps have seen somewhat a resurgence in the last year or so. Like a lot of people are going back to them because nothing replaces the chunkiness you get with high wattage tube heads. And now you've got affordable digital load boxes and stuff, they've suddenly become a lot more practical for home recording. They were completely out of new Mark III's at the warehouse, but they did have this tour used unit. Loaded it into my car, brought it home, played around with it, ended up loving it and I was like, yeah, I'm not bringing this back. You know, let me make a video, use it in other videos, but you're not getting this amp back. Since it was already a little beat up, they were okay with that. So that's the disclosure of how I got the amp and also an explanation as to why there are beer stain rings on the top of the Tolex. So right now, let's jump into a fully produced demo mix. I've tried to go pretty slipknotty for this one, not gonna lie. Like maybe I'm just used to hearing it in that context, but it just sounds right. But I've also tried to get some of that clean channel in there as well because it's got a really, nice one. So yeah, let's hear what it sounds like in a full produced mix, and then let's talk about what this amp is all about and why it has a special place in any amp collection. Might be as surprised as me to learn that the Rocker Verb is not an old amp line. This latest Mark III iteration launched in 2015, but the entire line was only introduced in 2004, then a Mark II was released in 2010. So it's been a very progressive, adaptable, fast-moving line, in part because so many artists were quick to adopt it and provide real-world feedback. Like Jim Root of Slipknot is who I'd regard as the poster child of the Rocker Verb series, but you've also got Mastodon, Mikey Demas of Skindred, Attila. Anyways, I found that kind of interesting because Orange has a reputation as a classic amp brand and the Rocker Verb has near, if not already legendary status, 
but the actual line is quite recent. But enough backgrounds, I tend to get caught up in the nerdy shit. Let's talk about the actual amp we have here. This is the 100 watt Mark III. It also comes in a 50 watt version and your choice of either the traditional orange Tolex or there is a black Tolex option as well. Or I guess the actual material is basket weave vinyl. Regardless, the black looks cool. It's nice that they offer the option. I'm glad I was able to get the orange though. It's like getting a Ferrari in red. It's just the right thing to do. <laughs> And I love the design philosophy when it comes to the visuals. There are very few words on the front panel, Orange instead opting to show rather than tell. The hieroglyphics are creative enough to be interesting whilst also being clear enough to communicate what everything does. <laughs> In terms of construction, this amp feels so f***ing solid. Built in the UK, it's one of the physically smaller amps in my arsenal. Measures 55 by 27 by 28 centimeters, so it's fairly compact for a high gain head. Yet somehow, it's also the heaviest at just under 25 kilograms or 55 freedom weight units. I don't know what they're feeding their amps over at Orange, but it is inexplicably heavy. It's just funny because it caught me completely off guard how much lighter it was than even the Triumph, which is a massive head. And while amps like said Triumph and really a lot of the modern flagships get really intense when it comes to an almost overwhelming feature set, the Rockerverb takes a refreshingly streamlined approach. <laughs> That's not to say it's underfeatured. Orange have focused on practicality. They've tried to make sure you can get right into playing and not get you bogged down in option paralysis. Unlike a lot of other front panels, this one is not panic attack inducing. <laughs> On the back panel, you can choose to run two of the EL34 power tubes, or all four, and the front standby switch doubles as a full or half power selector. So you can run the amp at 100, 70, 50, or 30 watts. Now wattage does influence volume, but that's more of a side effect. The main point is that your selection will greatly affect your tone. This amp responds very differently at 30 watts than it does at 100. <laughs> built-in attenuator is what you'll mostly be using to affect volume. This is smart, because the rocker verb has very sensitive volume and gain controls. They can change the tone drastically, and in my opinion, the amp sounds its best when it's cranked in 100 watt max power mode. So the attenuator helps a lot, where you can hit that sweet spot for the tones you like, then normalize the volume levels. So there's a control for that on the front, as well as for the valve-driven spring reverb. <laughs> Okay, so let's address the elephant in the room. Orange amps have a very particular sound, a very particularly polarizing sound. And that's because it is very, very different from anything else out there. In fact, from the tone clips I've been sprinkling in, you've probably already decided if you're a fan or not of that signature orange sound. <laughs> The Rockerverb's got two channels, clean and dirty. Dirty, you get a full EQ section, treble, mid, bass, as well as volume and gain controls. And I like how Orange does this, where the EQ controls have smaller knobs because those are the ones you'll be adjusting less often. Tone is where the Rockerverb shines. This has one of the nastiest dirty channels on the market. <laughs> D 
doomy. You know, the trend with modern high gain amps is to go tight and focused and smooth and a little bit mid scooped. And then you've got the orange, which is all about that fuzzy, highly emphasized mid-range, especially boosted with like a tube screamer, it'll cut through in a mix. And I mean, that's why it works so well in the context of Slipknot sound. They've got like 27 dudes in the band making <laughs> loud music. Okay, maybe not that much, but they've got main vocals, backup vocals, drums, additional percussion, sampling, bass, and then two guitars? That's a lot of <laughs> competing for sound space. And even through all of that, Jim Root's rocker verbs managed to cut through. Meanwhile, the clean channel has even more simplified controls in just treble, bass, and volume. And this channel is just straight up beautiful. It's so chimey and lively, and especially with the reverb engaged, it is a glorious clean sound. <laughs> It's pretty funny how this amp gives you either like super nice or super nasty tones. It's like both extremes of the spectrum. One random gripe I have is I wish you were able to easily instantly engage or disengage the reverb while leaving it set to where it is. On the clean channel, love setting it high, it really adds another dimension. It is foot switchable, but the amp doesn't come with a foot switch, so it would have been cool to have that ability somewhere on the front panel. So the Rocker Verb is such an interesting high gain amp. I like to think of it as like the Nintendo console of high gain amps. Like Xbox, PlayStation, PC, you can use any of them to play Call of Duty. Meanwhile, the Wii, you're out there swinging a stick playing tennis or whatever. In the same way, there are a ton of amps out there that with the right EQ tweaks, the right pedals, you can get them in the same tonal ballpark your modern, tight, mid-scooped sound, they all play Call of Duty. Then you've got the Rocker Verb, which is more loose, more fuzzy, and super mid-punchy. Swinging a Wii Stick, playing virtual tennis. And more than pretty much any other amp in my current collection, it is extremely sensitive. The tone can change a lot depending on the wattage you're running it at, the volume settings, the gain settings, and different guitars can get you very different sounds. Still an unmistakably orangey sound, but more so than a lot of other amps, this is a team player in the signal chain. And with two very different sounding channels built in reverb and a built in attenuator, immense weight aside, it's a surprisingly practical head too. I guess final note, let's wrap this up. This is an awesome head. Personally, the rocker verb isn't going to be my main sound, but as a studio tool to get that signature orange tone, or to blend in with other heads and bring that mid punch, it is an absolutely indispensable head in any amp arse. So that's the end of this video. Drop a like if you enjoyed it. Of course, these are just my opinions. I would love to know what you're thinking down in the comments. Thanks to Orange for letting me keep this amp and for sponsoring the video. Shout out to Luke for nailing the demo mix. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.